Hey guys, I this is Miss Ross here coming at you with chapters four and five of Sunset of the Sabretooth. So once again, if you have not watched the other chapters, make sure you go back and watch those before you watch this video. All right, without further ado, here is chapter four. Cave Kids. Jack and Annie crept to the cave and peeked inside. A small flame danced from a bed of glowing coals. Near the fire were knives, axes, and hollowed out stones. Animal skins were neatly stacked against the wall. People must live here, said Annie. Maybe it's the home of the Cro-Magnons we saw, said Jack, looking around. Let's go inside and get warm, said Annie. Jack and Annie moved quickly to the fire and warmed their hands. Their shadows danced on the stone walls. Jack pulled out his Ice Age book. He found a picture of a cave. He read, cro made many things from animals, plants, and stone. They made flute-like music, musical instruments from mammoth bones. They made ropes by braiding plant fibers. They made axes and knives from stone. Jack pulled out his notebook and pencil. He started a list. cro made bone flutes, plant ropes, stone axes, and knives. Ta-da, said Annie. Jack looked up. Annie was wearing a coat. It had a hood and long sleeves. It went all the way down to her sneakers. Where did you get that, said Jack. From that pile of furry skins, said Annie, pointing. These must be their clothes. Maybe they're being mended. She picked up another coat and handed it to Jack. Try one. It's really warm, she said. Jack put his backpack and towel down on the hard dirt floor. He slipped on the coat. It did feel very warm and soft. We look like cave kids, said Annie. Squeak. Peanut peeked out of Jack's pack lying on the floor. You stay in there, said Annie. There's no teeny tiny coat for you. Peanut vanished back into the pack. I wonder how they made these coats, said Jack. He turned the pages in the book until he found a picture of a crow magnet woman sewing. Crow magnet scraped reindeer skins with flint rocks to make them soft. They used bone needles to sew skins together for clothing. Jack added to his list, reindeer skin clothes. I hope the cave people won't mind if we borrow their coat, said Jack. Maybe we should give them our towels, said Annie, to, take, to thank them. Good idea. And my goggles, too, said Annie. They left their gifts on top of the rest of the animal skins. Let's explore the cave before they come home, said Jack. It's too dark in the back, said Annie. We won't be able to see anything. I'll find out how crow magnets saw in the dark, said Jack. He opened up the Ice Age book. He found a picture of cave people holding odd-looking lamps. He read aloud to Annie, cro made stone lamps. They hollowed out a rock, filled it with animal fat, then burned a wick made from moss. There, said Annie. She pointed to two stones near the fire. In the hollow of each was gooey white stuff and a pile of moss. We have to be careful, said Jack. He picked up on one stone. It was smaller than a soup bowl, but much heavier. Jack held the stone close to the fire and lit the piece of moss. He lit another lamp and gave it to Annie. Carry it with two hands, he said. I know, she said. Jack tucked the book under his arm. He and Annie carried their stone lamps to the back of the cave. Hey, I wonder where this goes, said Annie. She held her lamp up to an opening in the wall. I'll check in the book, said Jack. He put down his lamp and flipped through the Ice Age book. I think it's a tunnel, she said. Be right back. Wait a second, said Jack. Too late. She had squeezed into the opening and was gone. Oh, brother, said Jack, sighing. He closed his book and peeked into the opening. Come back here, he said. No, you come here, said Annie. Her voice sounded far away. You won't believe this. Jack picked up the lamp and book. He tucked it into a small tunnel. Wow, came Annie's voice. Jack could see her lamp flickering at the other end. Crouching down, he hurried, hurried toward her. At the end of the tunnel was a huge cavern with a high ceiling. Annie held her lamp close to the wall. Look, she said. Her voice echoed. Animals were painted on the wall in strokes of red and black and yellow. There were cave bears and lions, elk and reindeer, bison and woolly rhinos and mammoths. In the flickering light, the prehistoric beasts looked alive. All right, chapter five.
snow tracks. Wow, what is this place, said Jack. Maybe it's an art gallery, said Annie. I don't think so, said Jack. It's too hard to get to. He read about the cave paintings. These Ice Age beasts were painted 25,000 years ago. Cro-Magnons painted pictures of animals they hunted. They may have believed that paintings would give them power over the animals. Wow, look at this, said Annie. She pointed at a painting farther down the wall. It showed a figure with human arms and legs, reindeer antlers, and an owl face. It seemed to be holding a flute. Jack looked at the book again. He found a picture of the figure and read, Cavemen have been led by a sorcerer or a master of the animals. He may have worn a reindeer antler so he could run like a reindeer and an owl mask so he could see like an owl. What is it? said Annie. The master of the animals, said Jack. He's a sorcerer. Oh, wow, breathed Annie. That's it. That's what? That's who we have to find. Why? Maybe he's a friend of Morgan, said Annie. Jack nodded slowly. Maybe, he said. Let's go find him, said Annie. They went back through the tunnel into the first cave. We'd better put our lamps back, said Jack. He and Annie blew out their lamps. They placed them by the fire. Jack's backpack was on the floor next to the skins. He put the ice beige book into it. How's Peanut, said Annie. Jack looked into his pack. She's not here, he said. Oh, no, cried Annie. She must have crawled out when we were looking at the paintings. Peanut, Jack called. Peanut, called Annie. Annie walked slowly around the cave, looking into the shadows. Jack peered around the fire and under the end of each of the furry skins. Jack, come here, said Annie. She was standing near the entrance to the cave. The snow had stopped falling. In the snow were tiny That is the end of chapter five. Think about what you think those tracks are. What are those tiny tracks? Who made those tracks? Who do you think made the tracks in the snow? Do you think that the Cro-Magnons are gonna come back to that cave? Do you think they're gonna be surprised that their coats are gone? What do you think? Do you think that maybe the master of the animals is somebody they need to find? Think about it. Share it with your family. Maybe draw a picture of what you're predicting to happen next. All right, stay tuned um, on Thursday for chapter six and seven.